Thank you for joining us here at SSC Live TV. Dr. Ken Jobst will be discussing how your dietary habits can assist you in your spiritual goals. Welcome to Taste and See. Well, hello once again and welcome to SSC Live TV, Taste and See. My name is Ken Jobst and this is... Elisa Lee Jobst. And we're just delighted to be with you again for this episode of Taste and See. You know what, Elisa, this, this is a special episode. In, in this, <laughs> this episode, the, the theme of this episode is the devil made us do it. The devil made us do it. All right. Usually it's him making me do it. <laughs> Usually I make her do it. No, <laughs> the devil made us do it. And, and today we're going to be learning some tremendous stuff while we make a sandwich. Is that going to be all right? We're, all we're going to do, we're just going to make a sandwich. But the devil made us do it. And, and you know what? The springboard scripture for us is a, a scripture familiar to each and every one of us from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 8. And... It, it's the passage about the Gadarene demoniac. So from Matthew chapter 8, when he arrived at the other side of the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Now, as, as Pastor Cosby has told us many different times, this was the beginning of deviled ham. <laughs> that was bad. Right, right? <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't have a rim shot, so just everybody ready? One, two, three, but um bum. Okay, the beginning of deviled ham. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad we mentioned deviled ham because today we are talking, the devil made us do it. Mm. It must be deviled ham. It's deviled ham. It's <laughs> deviled ham. Now, okay, seriously, you've been up and down the aisle at Kroger. You've got a list of stuff that you're supposed to get and you've been up and down this aisle before and there's all kinds of other things but you've never reached up for that little tiny can of <laughs> deviled ham. And you've always said, I wonder what's in there. I, I wonder what's in that little can and why do they wrap it up in a piece of paper? Well, today, we're gonna find out. Okay. Now, <laughs> now th this, by the way, the Underwood Deviled Ham Company was actually a company that was established almost 200 years ago in wow. 1822. In 1822 in Boston, Mr. Underwood, who came over from the old country, he worked in food uh, preparation business in London, he came over to New Orleans. And from New Orleans, he made his way to Boston. And in Boston, he started a company that was making all kinds of like canned things, right? Excuse me. He, he, he was making things that he would put in jars. So he had all kinds of food that went into the jars and he ran into a problem. It was a business problem. Do you know what his business problem was? Let me guess. No jars. You can't get... Ran out of jars. I was right. <laughs> she was absolutely right. He, com Mr. Underwood completely <laughs> ran out of jars all around the Boston area. He couldn't find suppliers to make enough glass jars for his products. So what did the enterprising Mr. Underwood do? What he did was he understood that there was some experimentation with tin lined steel cans. 
right? 10 lined steel cans. And what did he put in those 10 lined steel cans? Put all kinds of things. Deviled everything? He didn't devil everything. <laughs> he didn't devil everything. But you know what? He sold canned lobster. Ooh. Have you ever had lobster from a can? No. Wow. He sold canned oysters. And, and yeah. he, he sold canned clams. Cl clams in a can, right? Mm -hmm. But but he also he also sold, you know, mackerel and sardines. He founded the first sardine cannery on the East Coast. And he put all these things in cans. What was the problem? Here's the problem. Every once in a while, especially those cans of clams, the cans would swell up and burst and explode, right? And it was messy and it was nasty. And it was also... It smelled stinky. Smelled stinky. But it's dangerous mm. because it's like, you know what was going on? It's like the bacteria in there, that anaerobic bacteria, expanding and expanding, putting the pressure on the can, the can blows up. Well, as it turns out, the good Mr. Underwood's grandson, William Underwood, right? William Underwood went to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He went wow. to MIT. And at MIT, he sat down with all of the, the, the people at MIT and said, you know what? What we need to do is figure out a way that we can make this thing work. Because I've got a big business. We don't want to mess it up. And you know what? There's some food safety issues we have to overcome. William Underwood established the discipline of food science at MIT. And, and from, from that time up until like 1968, there was an endowed chair for food scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And all of that helped to bring us deviled ham. By the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> deviled ham the, the Underwood deviled ham is the oldest continuously used food trademark in America. Wow. Ooh, ah. <laughs> so, so, uh, oh, by the way, let me say one other thing. And, and this, to this, I, I tip my hat to the Underwood family that all of the food science research they did at MIT when they, they discovered, you know, we're going to have to sterilize the cans in an autoclave and boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom, and the whole process, they refused to patent any of those processes. And they made them publicly available because they thought that was more important than making scads of money in the food business. So, that was very sweet. Wasn't that sweet of them? That was big, too. You know what? And that, that was so big of them, I've decided I'm going to eat a can of deviled ham. <laughs> Maybe not today, but soon, <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, by the way, now this is, this is amazing. Things you didn't know until you tuned in to Taste and See. <laughs> You've heard the expression canned food. As it turns out, the food was originally, the, the containers were originally called tin canistered food, right? Because it was food that was in tin lined steel cans. Right. Canisters, excuse me. Up until the Underwood Company, up until a bookkeeper in the Underwood Company, short, abbreviated the, the, the whole phrase uh, uh, tin canisters and called them cans. Cans. Not just tin cans, just cans. Cans. Not tin canisters. Mm -mm. Cans. So, so the birth of the word, the birth of the process, the whole thing, we have to thank the good Mr. Underwood. And, and once again, let me tell you, that's a, that's a scary old devil right on there, isn't there? <laughs> he's got the tail and the pitchfork and Definitely everything else. red. But he's smiling. It's an evil smile. It's an evil smile. <laughs> now, um, by the way, here I go. I'm, gonna, I'm taking off the wrapper that I dearly love, you know, I dearly love the notion that this thing is in a big wrapped up can mm -hmm. and I'm removing the UPC code and everything else. Do you want me to do that, gloved hands? <laughs> so, 
can't be that hard. <laughs> now, now here's here's what we got. We got it right here. Now, <clears throat> a good friend of mine years ago. Yep, that's the underwood. A good friend of mine many many years ago was a lover of underwood deviled ham, and he had just tremendous memories as a child uh, of how he and his father would come to the dining room table. And on Saturdays, what they would do, they, they would get a couple of slices of white bread, which I have right here. Right there is our white bread. Would you like a sandwich as well? No, thank you. I can do this. this, this it's no so trouble. You're so kind. I'm, I'm it's good. It's absolutely no trouble. I, I'm, I'm just making one. I'm just making I'm one. Just is making perfect. one is perfect. We'll Wouldn't want to, you know, open two cans. We will share it together. Oh, you're so sweet. And so he would take white bread, Wonder Bread, right? And opening the can of Underwood Devil Ham, which back in the day you had to use a can opener, but today it comes in a handy, handy ring top, ring top can. That's what they call them. And with two quick motions. Mm. He would divide the, the can. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this. Maybe we should have. He would, div he would divide the can and would take out half of the <sighs> deviled ham thusly and would spread it on the white bread, right? Now, I, where where does the term deviled come from anyway? What's what's all of, what what is deviled ham? Did you know that the word alma mater comes from the Latin meaning nurturing mother? One of our primary objectives at Simmons College of Kentucky is to nurture late bloomers. So it doesn't matter if you struggle through high school just to graduate or even if you earn your GED. We don't look at a student's past, we look at their potential. Simmons College of Kentucky, creating the next generation of thinkers. This is about theology. This, this is about something about God. And so, what I want us to do is, it, here's what it's called. It's called Abraham Kuyper's Theory of Sphere Sovereignty. Sounds complicated. Wow. To devil something means, first of all, you mince it, right? Which means you chop it very, very finely, very finely. So the first process of deviling deviled ham is to mince it. And so I think that's probably, I'm just gonna no, oh. Is that fine? Mm, okay. Perfect. The next step is American cheese. May I? Thank you. My lovely assistant will cheese us. I won't touch it with my hand since you have on the food service gloves. There you go. Alrighty. Oh, 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 okay. Now, and we bring the American processed cheese right there on the top. So now we're getting, we're getting closer, right? We've got the ham and the cheese, but and we're not done yet because it takes the mustard. Oh. French's classic yellow is the mustard of choice, seriously, because it is, it's what everybody is expecting in mustard flavor. So, on top of the yellow cheese then goes a little squiggle, back and forth. His name's Mike. Mike, God bless you. And we're using this recipe. Mike, you know who you are. You know I love this. And this is just working out famously. There we go. Now. We have the mustard, the cheese, and the deviled ham. So, and we've used half a can. So these cans are like for two people. Mmm. 
Now there's the top. And I learned from you that yes. sandwiches taste better when they're cut diagonally. Because you only have one corner. That's right. <laughs> so I'm cutting this diagonally. And we have, we've got leftover mm. deviled ham in the can, right? We have our sandwich made, but something tells me that we're not quite finished yet. You know what? We can't just eat the sandwich by itself. We need something else that's deviled. deviled. So what we're going to do, and remember, remember the recipe for deviling? You mince it, chop it all up, and put some spices in it. Mm -hmm. That's dev. Oh, oh! Now, right here we have cackleberries, hen fruit. Eggs. Eggs, right? I can eat that part. Okay, now, <laughs> let me ask you. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it's after the the equinox, do we cut them by the equator or do we cut them from the North Pole to the South Pole? North to South. North Pole to South Pole, we're cutting the eggs. So it makes it look like you're getting more food because it's bigger that it's way. It's bigger, okay, That's and we do the other one just exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. And having cut those two eggs, now we have four half eggs, but that's, put this right over here. Not deviled yet because to devil something you have to have what? You have to mince it. Mince it. And spice it. Yeah. So we're getting ready to do our mincing and spicing as we take the yolk. Yolk right out of the egg. Uh -huh. It's a yolk. It was very funny. <laughs> now. <laughs> yolk, get it? Like a joke. Okay. Now. Yes, sir. From our previous broadcast, we have been very wily, and what we did was we saved some pickles Ooh. from our pickle episode. Put them in there. We're going to put them right in here with the eggs. But you know what we have to do first? What? We have to dice them. I was going to say, to devil it, we have to cut it up, mince it, and add spices, and yeah, one of each. Okay, so, so we've got one of each. We've got a, a curried pickle and a cayenne pepper pickle. <laughs> and what we're going to do is dice these precious little emerald gems into eggable sized chunks. We're doing this very rapidly and with great care and precision. <laughs> so they're going to be delicious. We're still not done because what we need to do, and I, here's, this is just me. I prefer mustard as the basis for my deviled eggs rather than mayonnaise. Now I know there's mayonnaise people and they put... Me. Are you a mayonnaise person? I'm a mayonnaise person. By the way, this does remind me, my, my French's mustard reminds me of the parable of Jesus. How so? Well, that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, right? It's the smallest of all seeds, but it grows into something. And the thing that we lose touch with, in America especially, is that we just go and buy mustard. We don't buy mustard seed. However, you have a tin of Coleman's mustard powder in the cabinet. Have you yeah. seen that recently? Yes. And that tin of Coleman's mustard powder reminds us that mustard is powerfully spicy. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially that Coleman's mustard is so spicy, it'll clear your sinuses on a cold day. And, and the other thing is, what, what that saying from Jesus' point of view, is that the kingdom of God can be the kind of thing that puts a little zip in your life. The kingdom of God can be the kind of thing that uh, spices up your day-to-day -day living. Because you know what? It's an, it's an amazing thing to follow where God is leading in our lives. There's two of those now. And my deviled egg. That one worked. Oh, look at those. Perfect. And we're bringing all the rest of this. This one's coming right on home. Round and third and headed for home. Here comes egg number four. Now, 
My lovely and gracious wife likes to dice things very finely. Uh, I, however, sometimes I leave big chunks. He does. A and the big chunks remind me that, you know what, they're little flavor packets. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're going to bring a, a particular flavor home. Doesn't that look just so it's appealing? It's beautiful. It, it's, uh, th there's my deviled ham and deviled egg platter. <sighs> but still, there's something missing. St oh, if only, if only we could find a way to round out the devil made us do it platter. Like with something sweet maybe, something because you, sweet. I always end with something sweet. I mean, we have savory, we have spicy, we have the staff of life, white bread with crust on it. But how is it that we could just really, really round this out? <laughs> well, of course, of course. Devil's food. Cake. Snack cakes. A devil's food snack cake. <laughs> Some people would call these a little Debbie. Well, it's it's devil's food, right? You know what? I, there's no room on the plate we, because we have such a big sandwich. So we'll have to have a side of little Debbies. But the presentation there leaves, it, that's devilishly, um, oh yeah, yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Other way! Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you've got to see the swirl. You can see the swirl, that's true. She's the, the, the food stylist for the show. You'll see yes. it in the credits. Shoot. <laughs> there. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Here. Now we're in business. <laughs> now, so we have our Underwood deviled ham sandwich with devilishly good mustard and American cheese. Oh, look at that. Food stylist wife of mine. <laughs> and. and and deviled ham sandwich, deviled eggs, little devil Debbie devil's food cake. Not little devil Debbie, what am I saying? Little Debbie devil's food cakes. They're all here and it's just because the devil made us do it. <laughs> now, uh, well, once again, you know, easy, easy recipes, but what, what else is there that gets deviled? And, it, and once again, chopped, mm -hmm. chopped really finely, and then uh, having a spice put in. Well, another uh, uh, a cousin product that the Underwood people have is Underwood deviled chicken. Oh yeah. And so it comes in a little can likewise, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that if you would devil corned beef, you could do something like that. That right? might be good. Maybe we should try that. Maybe we're going to devil corned beef. Have you ever had steak tartare? I have not, actually. Uh, steak tartare. Not that fancy. We, we, we would uh, mince a nice piece of steak and try to put that all together in a presentable type fashion. But you know what? Go take a look in the refrigerator. See if there's something in there that needs to be minced and spiced. Ooh, what about a deviled fruit? What about if you use cinnamon with the, for the spice? Cinnamon for the spice. Take an apple, sugar. dice it, dice it, dice it. A little cinnamon and sugar. Cinnamon sugar. And then you would have. Wait a minute. Cinnamon and sugar is all everything nice. Yeah, but it's, it's still deviled. deviled because you cut up the apple and you have spice. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll let you decide. It'll, but, it'll be good devil. <laughs> a good little devil. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well. Well. Hey. You know. Once again. We invite you to share our recipes with a friend, share the culinary delights that we have found today. Remember, the devil made us do it. <laughs> uh, but until next time, you know what? You know what's missing? A good slice of onion right Ooh. on there would make the whole thing. I wish, I wish I'd have thought of that earlier. We'll take it home. We'll take it home. <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> well, once again, this is Pastor Ken and Elisa Jopes. We're just having such a delightful time. Thanks so much for being a part of Taste and See with us. Until next time, tell some friends, gather around, and we will do it all again next week about this same time. Hey, thanks so much. Thank Take you. care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.